Whether you operate one forklift or thousands, one location or hundreds, the new My Toyota customer portal can help you optimize your operation and material handling equipment. This one-stop, free-to-use platform is designed to help you take control of your information and make smarter decisions, all at the touch of a button. Register and access your data today at my.toyotaforklift.com. That's my.toyotaforklift.com. Does your warehouse waste time and money managing forklift batteries? Enersys can energize your operations with a customized solution, delivering the power you need while minimizing ownership costs. Enersys starts by analyzing your operations and then selecting from their comprehensive range of battery and charger technologies, develops a truly optimized system tailored to your needs. Enersys gives you the power to increase productivity and profitability. See how Enersys puts power in motion for you at Enersys.com. With e-commerce off the charts, many small and growing warehouses are asking, how can I get ahead when my warehouse is barely keeping up? The answer is future-ready warehouse tech from Zebra Technologies. Warehouses can simplify and upgrade all processes, from automated inventory management to hands-free picking with Zebra's tailored, scalable mobile solutions. They're simple and intuitive. There's never been a better time to upgrade for success with Zebra. How can your warehouse get ahead? The answer's in black and white. Get the answers at zebra.com slash the answer. That's zebra.com slash the answer. Businesses are retooling fulfillment operations from warehouses to omnichannel to meet new demand amid unprecedented labor shortages. 3PLs, retailers, B2B distributors, and others are turning to flexible fulfillment solutions like Six River Systems to adapt and scale. Six River Systems Fulfillment Execution System is an integrated solution that combines intelligent, cloud-based software and automation, including its autonomous mobile robot, AMR, Chuck. No costly or disruptive infrastructure changes, fast and easy associate training, and integrations with other warehouse execution solutions allow operations to meet labor challenges, increase efficiency, and enhance customer engagement. Go to www.sixriver.com to learn more. Go to www.the6river.com to learn more. The New Warehouse Podcast, hosted by Kevin Lawton, is your source for insights and ideas from the distribution, transportation, and logistics industry. A new episode every Monday morning brings you the latest from industry experts and thought leaders. And now, here's Kevin. Hey, it's Kevin Lawton with the New Warehouse Podcast here at Modex 2022 in the booth. And it is the last day of Modex mm. getting started here. It's been a great week. And I am going to be joined here by Craig Henry. He is the U.S. Industry Manager for Intra Logistics and Material Handling at Siemens. So, Craig, welcome to the booth. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Kevin. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we're on the last day. So, mm-hmm. so, how do you think it's gone this week? I think this show has been terrific. And I know... Uh, you know, when you're on the mic and doing a podcast, it's mm-hmm. nice to say how wonderful everything is, but it really has been right. phenomenal. When I look at the technology, particularly as an right. engineer, this is exciting to me, yeah. how far we've come in just five years mm-hmm. and what is shown here at Modex. We have so much automation, so much cyber yeah. stuff to see. <laughs> I had all ideas I was going to walk through and get all kinds of video of all the different robotic systems and the simulation mm-hmm. and emulation stuff going on. I haven't had time. There's been so many, so many folks coming by our, our booth and yeah, talking busy, about yeah. uh, uh, a whole lot. So I, I wish it were longer, actually. Yeah, I'm one actually, of the few, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> no, I would say the same. I mean, another day I think would be good. I mean, there's so much stuff. Like you said, you you look around. I mean, anywhere, anywhere you look, there's some type of new innovation, automation, robotics, something of that nature. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so you said you you guys have been busy at the booth. So Siemens, you guys do. A lot of things. Right? We do. Right? Yeah, so, it's, it's dizzying at times. Yeah, so tell us, I guess, uh, what, what are you doing here at Monex? What do you guys do for okay, the material handling industry? Okay, great question. And, and it's, it, it's funny you bring that up because I've gone mm-hmm. to supply chain and supply chain automation right. conferences, and they say, Siemens, what are you doing here? Yeah. What is your story? Because I thought you guys just did medical equipment because I yeah. had an MRI on my knee. <laughs> um, and, and no, there are a lot of, we're a $90 yeah. billion dollar company, right. global, uh, probably one of the 
oldest, largest engineering companies in the world. Now, mm -hmm. the part of Siemens that, that is here is digital industries, and we are about automation. Mm -hmm. and, and like Intel in a computer, we are the Intel inside with respect to a lot of the OEMs mm -hmm. that are here yeah. building automation equipment, whether we're, where we're talking about conveyors, mm -hmm. uh, automated flexible robotic cells, gantries, yeah. automatic storage retrieval. We're in there, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't see us unless you're, you're designing it probably or programming it. Yeah, we're breaking it open, right? We're breaking it open, absolutely. <laughs> All right, great. So so obviously, you know, you, you have a, a foothold in this world, and, and you're seeing a lot of the innovations probably sometimes maybe before. We're, we're seeing them at Modex if you're on the inside, right? So, a little bit. So, yeah, so some of these robots and automations, I mean, you know, we think about, you know, a couple of years ago even, it's hard to imagine that we would see this many robots in, in one place uh, mm -hmm. and just, you know, an actual practical applications mm -hmm. in our world world sure. so you know with that i mean there's there's often been and i mean this discussion has been going on for a long time right when robots come into the workplace you know are they really practical for the long term are they going to take over our jobs a lot of people say mm -hmm. uh, and you know what what do you guys find at siemens or, or what's your opinion on that and you know do you think that these robotic applications that we're seeing are, are going to be here for for the long term and, and really be kind of the, the new way we do work? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And, and this gets somewhat philosophical. If you think about mm -hmm. robotics have been around since the 50s. Right. You know, uh, yeah. Isaac Asimov wrote iRobot in, I think, 52. Mm -hmm. yeah. And was pretty spot on about a lot of things that how we would use a an autonomous mm -hmm. mobile robot to, to aid humans doing activities. There's a phenomenon that happens with all technology, and I think you've seen it with the Internet in that a, a new technology emerges and it, there's a latency period before it really mm. finds its center. For example, the internet back in, what was it, the 90s maybe? It was uh, right. Pets.com was going to take over the world. Yeah. The company spent, I think, $26 million on advertising and promotion. Mm -hmm. They were on the Super Bowl mm -hmm. ad list and I think they had a total of $15 million in sales and then they shut down. Mm. Now few decades later, yeah. we've got Chewy.com doing just fine, and yes, yeah. we're buying everything online. It wasn't that it was wrong, it was just early. Too soon. Here we yeah. are with robotics, it's the same thing, there's been a latency period, and I think now we are in the age of the robot, mm. and it is not to be feared, and here's why. Mm -hmm. In the same way that you have someone who's changing the, the, the tires on your car, yeah. if you're doing that activity, you're going to use tools. You're going to mm -hmm. use tools to speed that process up, make it more efficient, make it yeah. more accurate. That's what an air wrench is for. You set the torque, and then you go to town and zing, 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 and you, mm -hmm. you've done something that if you have a, a manual method, it's going to take a whole lot longer. Yeah. It's going to be the same way. Robotics are not going to take over the world. Mm. We, but we are going to find ourselves working more side by side with robotic technology in the same way that you pick up your phone and say, Siri, where's the nearest gas station? Yeah. Because <laughs> you're using a robotic, automated, intelligent device to aid you in what you're doing. But we're still going to be doing all these things. Now, getting to the, hey, are we going to be supplanting all of the labor out mm, there? Right. Well, yes and no. But let's specifically talk about the warehouse environment. Mm -hmm. The biggest problem, num I say this, number one problem and right. the number two problem is okay. the labor gap in yeah, the warehouse. Absolutely. And it's not that we are knocking people out of jobs that they wish they can have and their mm -hmm. families are starving. Yeah. It's quite the opposite in the sense yeah. that they don't want those jobs. They don't want those jobs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there was a fulfillment center that was for e-commerce only mm -hmm. for Walmart that was designed in 16, went live in 17 in mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. Yeah. They could only get one shift worth of workers and they needed three. Wow. And then Christmas came and a lot of people were unhappy and yeah. it was because people couldn't pass the drug test. They just couldn't find workers yeah. to do that work. Early on, the consulting firm that I talked to who, who mm -hmm. consulted with Walmart said, we tried to get them to automate. Yeah. We told them they needed to automate it. They would they not get the throughput. To. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just a requirement now. Mm -hmm. So I think if we all, let's step back and look, mm -hmm. it's not going to be the robots take over and the people are outside looking in, wishing for a job. Yeah. It is quite the opposite. We mm -hmm. need to automate. Which brings us into a whole new realm, which is what right. a lot of this technology in here, yeah. Modex, is about. Which is, how do you automate in a way that you get the best return on your investment for mm -hmm. that automation, and handle the labor gap issue and have the agility and resilience for the ever-changing demand coming through the warehouse. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I think it's a great point where, you know, people kind of 
they make this blanket statement that you know robots are going to take over these jobs and all these things. But you make a great point there that you know the jobs that they're going to be doing, like you could just ask that person that says it and say, well, "Do you want to do this job?" And they'll probably say no, right? So that's it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's taking over these kind of monotonous and, and repetitive things, or these things that at one point were strenuous and aiding the person like you said like uh, your example of the you know the air wrench for changing your tire i mean it's the same thing like if you want to use a tire iron to to do it it's going to be harder right or you want to make your job easier and you want to make sure that your employees are are safer as well so a lot of these robots you know that we're seeing are are helping with those those lifting aspects or the travel aspects reducing the amount of time that we're walking reducing the amount of weight that we're lifting I mean, it's just like a forklift aids us in lifting too, right? It's just now the forklift can do it on its own. You don't have to drive it. So so it's even more time spent doing actual more value-added activities. That's the word, value-added, right? right. Um, from a Siemens perspective, you know, how are you guys kind of, I guess, helping to to advance robotics in that way? And, and what types of things do you do you look at to, to evaluate where the landscape of material handling is, is heading? That's a great question too. What we've done, which is unique in the industry, is that maybe a decade ago we started investing into the Industry 4.0, which is Mm -hmm. not just having automation equipment, which would be controllers and screens and motors and drives and systems, because you can can have those from a dozen vendors and Mm -hmm. do just fine. The big difference is that we have put in a a commonality among all the microprocessors in our Mm -hmm. system, so they all speak through one totally integrated package right. and so all the data that we're producing down on the shop floor is available all the way up through the edge through the, into the cloud mm-hmm. so that we're putting the data up mm-hmm. that is necessary for folks who are doing you know the automation of a warehouse to yeah. say what's happening right now mm-hmm. we've done this in our own factory that makes our PLCs over in Germany yeah. our Amberg factory we, we practice what we preach in the sense that we That's put mm-hmm. a factory together and went from a standard mm. you know, manufacturing facility and put together a Siemens centric you know IIoT methodology and what okay. that meant was we yeah. went from hundreds or thousands of, of errors per million yeah. to 50 we have no downtime wow. yeah. we've reduced the carbon footprint by 50 percent. Mm-hmm. All the things that business is doing today, we've, yeah. we've, we've done that ourselves, and that's what we bring. We bring mm. not only the data I told you about, yeah. but we also bring the ability to do sustainability and, and reducing the carbon footprint. Mm-hmm. And the final piece that that brings is because we have an integrated architecture, you can do the planning ahead of time, yeah. design your systems and software, run them in software, mm-hmm. figure out the best iteration, then you start making the investment in the in the asset itself, mm. and that can save thirty percent of your project cost because yeah. you you've planned it, you've made your mistakes in software where it's cheap and fast, and you can just change it mm-hmm. rather than oops, we bought the wrong systems, and now yeah. we have a facility <laughs> and it's not quite big enough for we don't have enough lines. Yeah. So emulation simulation software is, is is key in this industry, and we have that as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, along those lines, I want to take a, a step back there. You mentioned that, you know, making sure that the data is, is consistent all the way through and things of that nature. So there's, you know, there's some discussion in the automation robotics world about interoperability and, and communication between different companies and, and different solutions. So so is Siemens helping in, in any way to, to accomplish that by, you know, maybe standardizing some of the things that you're putting into these different solutions? Oh, absolutely. There, there are... A, a, a scad of various industry mm-hmm. standards that open right. standards that we're about. We're all about being open. Yeah. Uh, we don't want any of our systems to be black boxes. Mm-hmm. We have networks that we have put together that have safety mm-hmm. capability that's second to none yeah. within our systems. But we are very open to, to play well in all environments with Modbus TCP and Ethernet IP and Profinet okay. to be able to speak and get that data that we're producing out to whatever systems need to be there. Mm-hmm. We, at this point, have the only programmable logic controller that does AI inside. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, we're a, this is a network world. I mean, a computer's yeah. job has moved from calculating yeah. to networking. That's yeah. what computers on Earth are, are generally about as far as we're concerned. Mm-hmm. And that networking is everything, inside mm-hmm. and outside the organization. There's a, there's a company called One Network that had, they have a tagline and they have a software, it's a control tower type software, but they refer to one version of the truth. Okay. And I think that that's a, 
it was kind of an epiphany for me when I heard that because so many organizations are built mm. and hoping that they're getting all the data at the same time, but they have data that's late. This mm. is a week old data. This yeah. is a day old data. But the systems we now have will allow you to be able to do, to close the loop on everything that's happening in your organization in, mm. in a few hours because yeah. you have all the data about your vendors and their are they late? Are their suppliers late? Do we have a line down? Mm -hmm. what, what has to happen and what changes we need to make before we lose all kinds of productivity? Mm -hmm. So that one version of the truth requires real-time data. Right. And that's about the networking you're talking about. We have to get mm -hmm. that data to where it can be actionable. And, and that's really our story that mm -hmm. differentiates ourselves, uh, uh, us from mm -hmm. Our competitors okay. who may not have, have invested so much in how they network and how they put information up to the enterprise. Okay, got it. Very interesting. And obviously, you know, that, that visibility, as I think you're talking in there, is, is such, a, such an important thing, I think, for just our industry as a, as a whole, mm -hmm. just being able to see what's really going on, especially as we have so many more moving parts and, you know, so many more things being thrown at us as of consumer oh, demand and all those things, right? Yeah. So, so there's so much change going on, and, and you mentioned in there the emulation and, and simulations as well, and it's very important to, to understand that before you start to implement something, and as you said, you know, you say, oops, and, you know, it's a big oops, right? So if you make the wrong decision. So so talk to us a little bit about, you know, how the emulation and simulation can, can help companies understand when they're going to make a change maybe they're you know adding a, a new product line or, there, or there's a different product mm -hmm. mix coming in or maybe their their packaging is changing you know how, how do those types of things help you to to brace yourself or or make the right decision in terms of a, a pivot of your operation to be able to handle that with the new tools mm -hmm. which I say they're new. We've been doing computer-aided design for decades, right. 50 years or so, mm -hmm. and that is a kind of simulation. Okay. But what we're doing now with the tools that we have is not just to make a digital model of, mm -hmm. of a plant, which, by the way, you can take scanners, LiDAR scanners, and get them into a, a brownfield facility and scan mm -hmm. the whole thing into a point cloud. It's a yeah. gigantic file. You can do it in the dark, even, mm -hmm. and it will give you an absolute dimensionally correct scan of your entire facility. Bring that mm -hmm. into the tools. Now you have the new line or the expansion you want to do. You start putting function into the components that are already in the plant mm -hmm. and then the ones you're going to add, and you literally can, can perform tasks in that software yeah. and, and test that digital asset to see, is it going to give you the throughput you want? Mm -hmm. You can use tools to see what is the weight capacity of something and do the finite right. analysis if you want. You can see how fast you can run it uh, mm -hmm. based on the systems. You can literally run the code mm -hmm. that would be running on the line before you start even implementing the system. Mm -hmm. And if you invest that up front, like I said, you, you can reduce that, that time to get this thing implemented because time yeah. is everything right now. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's, there's a big company out there that starts with an A, mm -hmm. ends with an Mazan, that... Yeah. Time is everything. <laughs> right. That's almost more important than cost, although mm -hmm. I'm sure cost is important to them because staying ahead in the market is about time. Mm -hmm. Well, integrators tell me that 70% of their energies and time and money are spent from the point that all their stuff arrives on site and mm -hmm. now they have to make it work. Right. Well, if you've done that digitally ahead of time with the tools, whether it's greenfield or brownfield project, yeah. you can run it, make your mistakes, run your code, mm -hmm. know that it's going to work, and then, with our systems at least, when you go to implement with the real PLCs and VFDs and conveyors and everything, yeah. you've already run the code and you've already written a lot of the code. Mm -hmm. You just execute on that code mm -hmm. and fine tune and do the interoperability with other systems that are out there. Right. And you've saved, like I said, we've seen, this isn't just a up to number, 30% is a realistic number of how much time and energy and money you can save yeah. when, you, when you take this approach. Mm -hmm. Very few are doing that end to end. A lot of times yeah. it's, let's build it and then, hey, we'll digitize it after and see if it works. And <laughs> that's kind of cool to have it. But yeah. really when you do it up front, you can iterate mm -hmm. and change. And then the, the, the corollary there is once it's all in place and you have that digital twin of your operation, mm -hmm. when things change, you still have that digital twin to say, okay, we're running and that's all good. Mm -hmm. Let's now see what the next move is. Yeah. And you're just adding to that same model. Mm -hmm. So you're really working in these two worlds, the virtual world and the real world, mm -hmm. constantly as you move forward. And it makes you future-proof, really. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, you know, being able to, to see those things and not only see them when they happen, but see them before they happen is, is such a, a key. And as you mentioned, you know, time is so so critical. And, you know, like our, our big friends that you mentioned, you know, they they have certainly pushed us into an arena where, you know, we need to be as succinct and on time as possible for the consumer to, to even be necessarily receptive to us, you know, unless we're, you know, selling some, some hot, hot, you know, product, you know, if you can't deliver on the, the service level that the consumer expects, then, you know, they're going to go with someone else that, that can, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So being able to see all those things and, as you mentioned, you know, start to implement them up front instead of waiting, you know, down the road and thinking like, oh, we could do this later. You know, your example for the, the Walmart Center is a, is a perfect example, right? You know, they, they really got hit hard and obviously, you know, you know they're a huge company and they, they can recover, I'm sure, from something yeah. like that. But, you know, when you look at the, the smaller to mid-sized businesses, they really don't have, you know, that extra runway to, to make up that recovery or figure it out at a, a different distribution center that they have because they may only have one they may only have two something like that so so it's really interesting talking to you craig about these different things and, and the importance of the visibility and you know where automation and robotics kind of stand in our in, in our industry in our, our arena i mean you know it's, it's evident especially being here that you know, it's something that's that's here to stay, I think, and something that will Definitely. certainly be seeing more developments and, and more innovation as, as time goes on. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so really great to talk to you here, Craig, and I want to thank you for coming by the booth. If people want to find out more information about Siemens, how can they do that? Well, they can contact me, Craig Henry, and, and I'm available on LinkedIn. Okay. Also, Siemens.com, mm -hmm. and you can put the keyword intra logistics, and it'll bring up all kinds of great data there. We've got videos and and product, but you know, I'm certainly here to help if I can, mm -hmm. and uh, certainly people can reach out to me. Mm -hmm. and I'd love to, to guide them to not only our organization, but those uh, solution providers and integrators around the world who have an expertise in what they're looking for. All right, great. And we'll put all that information at thenewerhouse.com as well. So great discussion with you, Craig, and thank you so much for coming by the booth, and enjoy the last day of Modex. been listening to the new warehouse podcast with kevin latte subscribe and check us out online at the new warehouse.com thank you for listening to this episode if you want more content from the new warehouse check out our new video series called all hands on linkedin just search for the new warehouse on linkedin and follow along